hello! If you remember in my previous video I painted this, well I used these boards here to rest all of my pieces on while I was painting so that I could move them elsewhere to dry. And now I have some rather messy looking pieces of MDF here with bits of paint all over them, so I thought I would paint the boards into some pictures and use them up rather than chucking them away because this wood is very nice, it's quite thick and it is perfect for painting on because it's nice and smooth. So instead of using white or black gesso, I'm actually going to use some clear gesso. I'm going to draw a design just on here and I'm going to put the clear gesso on and then I'm going to go straight into painting regardless of these black marks. I really hope that that's not going to be a big mistake, but I thought I would try it out and see how it goes. I'm going to do some seasonal paintings today, and here's some footage of my subject. If you saw my community post last week, I put up this photo of our crabapple tree, which for about two weeks of every year, it just goes into this huge bloom. It's so pretty. Look at all those blossoms. And thank you very much for all of your well wishes for my dad. He's doing really well at the moment, which is a big relief. But of course I was really inspired to do some sort of artwork and I ended up choosing this photo to paint and I was also going to paint this one but I just ran out of time plus it's just a bit too complicated. I have my limited collection of golden open acrylics here. I really want to get some more but once again the shops are still closed so I'm just waiting until they open again to think about getting a few more but I should hopefully have enough colours to do what I want and I am just addicted to these paints at the moment. They're really wonderful to use, they're lovely and smooth and the slow drying effect of them is excellent for me because I find fast drying acrylics to be incredibly frustrating. So let's get into it. Actually, a much smarter idea would be to flip the boards so that I can paint on this side. And I think what I will probably end up doing, as I usually do with MDF, is just paint the back with the black gesso because that really seals it in. This stuff can get waterlogged, so I always like to seal all surfaces. So I'm going to flip them over, and that means I don't have to contend with any black marks. I ended up painting two of the three boards today. I covered them first with that clear gesso and you can see here I have drawn the blossoms on already because I find that if you paint the gesso over the top of the graphite, the graphite then won't smudge in with the acrylic paints because I've found that's happened before and it's super annoying. And this is the second picture that I wanted to paint and this is a nod to all of my Northern Hemisphere viewers because I know it's autumn up there so I figured I might do a seasonal autumn picture for you. I'll talk about this one a bit later, but let's get into the spring blossoms first. That gesso has dried so clear you can barely tell it's on there, but it does create a nice seal and makes painting with the acrylics a lot easier on top. And painting directly onto the wood, it's like using any other toned surface. I really like that. So you start off with the mid-tone rather than either a white or a black canvas, which is always fun. So here I'm doing a bit of an underpainting using the open acrylics but I mean you could use any acrylic paint for that underpainting because I'm going to go over the top of it but I just wanted to cover the wood and get some idea of the colours that I might want to use because in the end I didn't really use my reference photo that much aside from the blossoms in the central part of the photo which were the focal point. But from the start I just really struggled with these paintings and I think a lot of it is because I did take some time off and it totally threw my schedule for filming. Having all the drama of taking my dad in for his surgery and things like that which was made so much more complicated by the lockdown. You know having to get tests and all of this beforehand. Oh, it was a really stressful couple of weeks and I am so glad that that bit is over. So it was hard for me to get back from that stress into thinking about making videos because I didn't want to not make videos. That for me is really important to keep my channel going because I've worked too hard to let it go now. But getting back into the swing of my routine and also being creative was really tough, far more than I was expecting it to be. So this painting, when I went into it, I was just going, I don't remember how to paint. What if it's a total mess? I have to show something and all these other people were going to be judging my artwork and yeah I had a bit of a freak out over it. So it took quite a while to just get over that. I had to tell myself it's like why am I trying to be perfect? I never worry about that in a lot of my other videos I just tend to paint and so 
in this painting particular, which is the first one I did, I felt really quite rigid and incapable of just letting go. So I'm not super happy with this one. I actually do like how the blossoms came out, but the background was just getting to me because in the photo, it's really complicated. There are a lot of blossom details, but when I started to paint them into the background and make them try to look blurry, it just didn't work. It was really domineering and the blossomy background was taking away from the blossoms in the front. So you could see I had started doing that in the middle with the lighter parts and it just left no contrast whatsoever between the background and those ones that I have in the foreground. So in the end, I just went stuff it and you will see in a little while I painted over the whole background again, just using a lot of the blues and yellows to get a green base. And I went over that pink to get rid of that. It's a bit of a mess, but I managed, I think, to pull it back in the end. Oh, and the other thing that I noticed with these paints, I was having a real problem with that yellow. This is Hansa Yellow Light and it is incredibly transparent. And it's also quite a weak yellow, so a lot of the other blues and things are far more domineering. And so I needed to use so much more yellow than any of the other colours. And I didn't really like it very much, so when I go to buy a few more of these paints, I wouldn't mind getting maybe some of the cadmium yellows, because they are far more opaque and they are a much stronger colour, even though they're way more expensive of course, but I think it will be worth actually investing in a good yellow and an orange too. I really wanted an orange later on, as you'll see in my second painting. But here's me finally cutting loose and just going over that background with a random green layer and I didn't worry about what the photo actually looked like because I decided that I was just going to have those blossoms in the front and leave the rest of the background as a nice green layer. It doesn't have to be exactly like the photo, Becky. I need to remind myself of that sometimes. I get caught up in that need for perfection or making things look exactly as they are in a photograph. I mean, being that I was a photographer for many years, sometimes I find it quite hard to distinguish between the two. So this was really good for getting me to loosen up a bit more. And I did paint in a few sprinkles of petals just to give a bit of a break in that background. And I was trying to figure out what was missing on the flowers, but then I realized I hadn't painted in the little stamens in the middle. So once I added those, they did look quite a lot more like blossoms than they did before. And I just added in a bit of burnt sienna on the edges of them just so you can get some definition. It's not my favorite painting in the world, but I'm happy I managed to finish this one. And now for the autumn pumpkins. I'll link the reference photo in the description below. This is actually one I had put as a contender for Inktober, but I didn't end up using it because I've gone with a different idea. And I really liked this picture, so I wanted to paint it somewhere, and I thought it would be fun for this. So the pumpkins that they have in here are mostly orange ones, but there were a couple with the greeny spots on it. And this is my underpainting once again, which I painted directly after the first one because I wanted both of them to dry before I went into the details. Uh, this one was just as difficult as the first one because I was still unsure of what I wanted to do with these and I was trying too hard to stick to the photo, which some of the time I can do that with no problem, but I think just in my state of mind at the time of painting these, I just wasn't in the mood to be following a very rigid structure of trying to paint realistically from a photo. Now I know this is a problem that many artists have, most artists that I know actually have moments of time where we just really question our ability and it's like it's terrifying to start an artwork because you're in this mindset that it just has to be perfect and it has to look exactly how you want it to in your mind. And as is so often the case, at least for me, my paintings and drawings will quite often not turn out as I expect them to, and they will tend to go on a tangent of their own, which I really love about art in general. And I like usually not being able to plan things. You can see here I was trying to use a palette knife and oh, it was a total disaster. I nearly threw this out right here. I just said, oh my gosh, I, you know, I hate this so much. And I was feeling quite defeated because I was very aware that I do need to post a video and that everyone else is going to see this painting. That's really hard. 
just knowing that other people are going to look at my work and judge it. But then I sort of thought to myself, well, what's the worst that can happen? It's a crappy painting and people go, you know, <laughs> at least it's eliciting some sort of reaction. And so I actually really made myself let go of that need for this painting to be perfect. And I just started slapping paint on. I wasn't really able to get the orange that's in the photos anyway because as I said that yellow is really weak and the naphthol red was just domineering it so everything came out this either red or pink colour and so I just went with those colours. I'm like, why does it have to be orange? My pumpkins are now going to be a pinky orange more of a salmon shade but I just started mixing the paints actually on the wood itself and it came out quite well. I really like how loose this painting ended up being. Once I let go of that need for perfection which in my opinion really kills creativity like nothing else will, I was then able to actually enjoy myself and have fun with the paints. That is the most important thing. I know a lot of us get really stuck in this, oh, I've got to be good mindset. And I've seen it in a lot of other people that they won't actually paint anything because they're too afraid of it not working out. And I was doing this here. I nearly threw this painting away. But really the only failed art is the artwork you don't make because you're afraid of failure. And I feel this, it's a very valid feeling. I know a lot of artists will feel this at some point or another. But like in many other parts of life, fear is usually what holds us back more than anything else. And if you can get past that, if you can just say, oh stuff it, I'm just going to paint something and make a mess anyway, those scared feelings do actually go away pretty quickly and I started to once again fall in love with these paints and just the feeling of putting that paint on the wood. It's such a nice sensory experience and you can see my green pumpkin here actually turned out pretty well. I really love the colours in it so while it's not anywhere near what the photograph looks like you could still tell that they're kind of pumpkins. <laughs> And the most amazing thing about art is that your representation is going to be totally different to someone else's and that's why people love it so much because it's not just a static picture, it has movement and feeling and you're putting your own soul almost into the painting. So I find it a very cathartic experience to let go of my insecurities and just paint something. And if it looks like a mess, oh well, there's always next time. And now I have two more paintings from Junky Old Wood. So I call that a win. And I'm done. And here are my two finished paintings. They are not at all what I was expecting to end up with. But in some ways I feel like they're a lot more honest to how I was feeling at the time and it was really liberating just letting go of that need to be perfect or have something that looks exactly like the photograph or whatever and I feel like I was able to get something a lot more dynamic and with a bit more expression and movement in it especially the pumpkins and I really feel that painting these has loosened me up again which is great because I was a bit nervous about getting back into the routine of making videos and things it's been a while since I've properly filmed one and yeah I just feel like I'm back in the swing of things and I'm all ready to go for October which is going to be probably an ink heavy month. There will be some Inktober but I also have some other ink related videos that I have planned. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day out there and maybe this will inspire you to get doing some of your own art and let go of that need for perfection. Just enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling the pens or pencils or paints going onto the surface. Just that in itself is really relaxing. And on that note, I will see you in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye.